while working on the four output power supply, I needed to put different loads on each of the four outputs. I realized I needed something more versatile and easy to use than just stringing together resistors from my power resistor box. It was taking way too much time and was just a hassle sorting and unsorting resistors to change the load. So I made me a few of these to finish up work on the power supply. Sort of a low power, low cost resistor load box. And here's how I ended up with them. Most of my power resistor amalgamations seem to have fallen in the 1 to 5 watt range. And at very low voltages maybe need to handle up to an amp. So I wanted a resistor load that can handle 10 watts or 1 amp, whichever is lower. That should do for almost all of what I need. Value wise, it's rare I put resistors together that totaled more than 150 ohms. So I'm going to say need to handle up to 200 ohms. I want it pretty easy to select the resistance value. And it needs to be fairly cheap. I'm going to need four or five of them. So I'm going to shoot for less than $50 each. I suspect those last two requirements are going to have to trade off somewhat. First, I decided I need to see what values I need to create 1 to 9 ohms in 1 ohm increments. I know the non-inductive power resistors are a little on the expensive side, so I sure don't want to use 9 of them. With 4 values, I can create 1 to 9 ohms. By using 1, 2, 4, and 7 ohm resistors, I can get my 9 values. And of course replace those with 10, 20, 40, and 70, and I can do 10 to 90 ohms in 10 ohm increments. Well, that's the first part of the plan. Switch selection would be nice, but it looks like once get over about 250 milliamps DC on the 10 position gang switches, the price goes way up. So it's blow the budget out. That's not really an option. Give up on the 1 amp. I don't really want to do that. Or don't use switches for resistor selection. There are only five connections to the resistors. If I put a jack on each connection, then I'm the switch. I don't really think that would be too bad. Not near as easy as just turning a couple of knobs, but I get my one amp, and I don't have to worry about switch contacts not making a good connection, which I would if I used cheap switches. I think that will work. So to get one to 99 ohms, I need 10 banana jacks and eight resistors. I could put in two more banana jacks and a 100 ohm resistor and that would give me 1 to 199 ohms. Or 15 banana jacks and 12 resistors would give me 1 to 999 ohms. That would be the most versatile. Okay, I need banana jacks and resistors to give this a try. So it's parts hunting time. First thing I did was look for some 10 watt non-inductive resistors. What I found? Very few values in stock and what was in stock was at least twice what I was expecting to pay. So change of plan. For years, I've been sorting 1 and 2 watt resistors together for loads. They have worked just fine, so why not use 2 watt resistors to make up the values I need? The 2 watt resistors are mostly in the 10 to 15 cent range, so that's not bad. Sorted close together, I know I'll have to derate the 2 watts to probably 1 watt, but still, 10 2 watt resistors will be less than $2 and I can live with that. So the plan is to parallel 2 watt resistors to create the values and power handling I need. The 7 ohm and lower values won't need to dissipate 10 watts. The 1 amp limit will keep the power down in those. Of course the 4, 40, 7, and 70 are not standard values, so we'll have to make a bit of adjustment to get these from standard values. That was the plan, and I still believe that method will yield the best results. But in my search for 2 watt power resistors, Arrow was clearing out some 2 ohm flame proof resistors for half a cent each. Half a cent. Now they're not top quality, but still 5% with a 300 part per million temperature coefficient for half a cent? Can't pass that up. So I went all out and bought a whopping $2.50 worth of them. Sometimes it's nice to splurge. I now have a lot of 2 ohm resistors to put together. So I made me a bit of a jig to speed up soldering them. The first couple of hundred went pretty fast. Then it seemed to turn into more of a chore. There were a few fleeting thoughts here that I might have miscalculated a bit. I'm making the resistor tie points out of 14 gauge solid copper wire. 
It's pretty rigid and should be a bit of a heat sink. The center arm will solder to a banana jack and two resistor values will attach to each end. Should hold them firmly in place. The 2 ohm resistors work very well for the 1 to 7 ohm values. Just about perfect for the 1 ohm and 2 ohm. I'm sure the 4 and 7 ohm values will have a bit more inductance than if I would have used parallel resistors to make these values. But this will do for an initial test to see how this works out. All the 1 to 9 ohm settings should handle well over 1 amp without any problems. I am a sucker for a sale, that's for sure. So I talked myself into using the 2 ohm resistors to make up the 40 and 70 ohm values as well. After the fact, that was a mistake. Putting together 35 resistors is a pain. They don't even support their own weight, so I had to make a nylon spacer just to support them. It really took as much time to make up and install the 70 ohm value as most of the other values combined. But it is only 18 cent worth of resistors, and 10 watts really won't even put a load on it. I did find some 2 watt 100 ohm resistors for a little under 5 cent each. So the 10 ohm value is the only one that is made up from all the resistors in parallel. I think not only will the inductance be lower with them in parallel, I think heat dissipation will be better as well. Arrow also had a good price on some press in banana jacks. Very nice quality Caltest jacks and at less than 60 cent each. Just have to use gray, which is just fine. I really wanted the press in jacks for this. It really speeds up making the panels, not having to put a nut on each jack. I would imagine the jacks with the nuts would cost more. I didn't even look because these were exactly what I was looking for. I made the boxes out of acrylic scrap, so the only cost in them is a bit of glue and wear and tear on a cutting bit. I did make one box that goes 1 to 999 ohms, just to see how much more useful it would be. And I made 5 1 to 99 ohm boxes. Less than $40 in jacks and less than $20 in resistors. So I'm at about $10 per box. Way less than I was expecting to spend. But the resistors I'm using are a lesser quality than what I was originally planning on. The cheap resistors are not bad. They seem to be off by less than 2% to the low side. Way better than the 5%. I'm pleased with that. Now the 100 ohm resistors are very close way under 1% off, but they did cost about 10 times as much. Total resistance should be 99 ohms, and it's actually 97.3 ohms. That is way close enough for what I need. After using the load boxes a bit, I'm pretty happy with them. I haven't really tested how much power they can handle. The box is made of acrylic, and acrylic is a pretty low melting point plastic it also will burn. So maybe not the best case material for something that is going to get quite hot inside. I will get around to doing some power and temperature tests, but it's doing what I need it to do for now. I can already see that I much prefer the 1 to 999 ohm box over the 1 to 99. So any refinements to the boxes will include going with the full range. Adding 5 jacks and 4 resistors just doesn't make much of a difference in cost or in the time it takes to make one, and it does add so much more versatility. I really would like to get 1 to 999 ohms in a box the size of the 1 to 99. I just need to figure out a way to dissipate the resistor heat a little better. So this project is not over. This is just the first stab at it. Thank you for watching.